Raise your hand if you understand uh, uh, adversity and affliction in your life. Raise your hand if they understand that. Yeah, it happens. Because you're in this earth, you're a child of God, and you're going to face adversity and afflictions, even as Jesus himself said that it would happen. Uh, but then he went on to say, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Amen. Can you shout amen to that? Amen. So, as far as those graduating today, and some of you will continue on to um, higher levels of education in, in, in the classroom, and some of you will not go to college, but will move on to higher levels of learning in the workplace, and which is fine also, whatever God has for you. And though you may think that uh, you've been delivered from uh, tests, uh, I just want you to know that your whole life will continue to be uh, of testing. Uh, the, the testing of your life, the testing of your love walk, the testing of your faith in God, because tests are just, a, um, is really what life's about. If you agree on that, say amen. amen. Yet on the other hand, if you will preserve your love for God, which we're going to see this morning from an example of Joseph's life, if you will, if you will keep your faith in God and, you dev and your devotion to God, praise God, the Holy Ghost will, uh, will strengthen you on the inside so that you pass every taste, test that you face in life. Amen. I just want to encourage you with that. Uh, I mean that for every one of us, that we keep our faith in God in our allegiance to God. It, it saddens my heart uh, it, it, when, when I hear uh, of uh, such a high percentage of uh, uh, young adults uh, graduating from high school and the, uh, either into the college scene or the workplace scene, and they fall away from God. That so saddens my heart because that's never been the will of God. Amen. If you agree, say amen to that. Amen. It's always been as well that you avoid the heartache and the pain that maybe many of us in here uh, um, uh, experience because we didn't. Uh, we either didn't know or we simply knew but rebelled against uh, the word of God and the will of God for our lives. So um, uh, you become what you behold. So make sure you choose wisely the people that you hang around with and choose wisely uh, what you're going to embrace as your doctrine. Uh, the world has a doctrine for you, but God has a doctrine for you. Can I have an amen? And so you want to make sure you walk with the Lord. So we're going to take a journey this morning uh, with Joseph uh, to see uh, the kind of life and the adversities that he faced in life uh, uh, before God brought him to his divine destiny. Say this out loud. God has, God has a, divine a divine destiny for my life. For my life. Amen. Amen. And I don't mean to over-spiritualize anything. You know, life is the way it is. You get up every morning, you know, you throw on, you hopefully shower, and then you throw on your clothes, and you head uh, to this place called work so that you can provide for your family. All of a sudden, you, know, you get married, and you start to have children, and life is what it's supposed to be. Uh, it's supposed to be simply relational in that you are uh, wanting to, in your relationships, reveal that God is present in your life. Raise your hand if you know someone around you that doesn't know the Lord in your life, or that's a neighbor, a friend, a co-worker, and, uh, and God has called you to be a light to them uh, and according to the way you live, the way you act, the way you talk. Amen. So Joseph was the great-grandson of Abraham. Can you imagine that? Uh, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It was Abraham, Isaac, and, and, and Jacob, and then Joseph was the great-grandson of Abraham. He was the, 11th, uh, uh, the, the last of 11 children. And the Bible says that Joseph uh, loved, um, uh, excuse me, that um, his father loved Joseph more than all of his sons. Now, we know that that was not a correct thing to do, but it was simply Jacob was older in, in his life now, and, um, and all the other boys were growing up, and all of a sudden, he had this immense love for this last child called Joseph. And because of that love for Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph suffered persecution from his brothers. In fact, the Bible says that his brothers hated him. Can you imagine that? That a sibling rivalry would become so intense that you literally hate your blood covenant brother. But that was the scene in this story. And that relational dysfunction goes all the way back to Cain and Abel. Relational dysfunction, that uh, you could actually, you know, have a covenant with God, but you're so insecure that you have, to, you have to persecute one who is walking with God. And we know that Joseph had such a love for God and a passion to please the Lord and to follow him. And so uh, uh, the Bible says that, uh, we'll read the scripture in a moment, that Joseph had a dream. And, um, and he told his brothers the dream. 
And uh, of course, it didn't go over real well. So let's read, and I'm going to read out of the King James Version, and, um, and I'm sure it'll be on the screen for you. And it's, it says that, chapter 37, Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, where? In the, in the land of Canaan, which is Israel today, okay? And the Bible says, these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of uh, Bilah, and with the sons of Zilpah, uh, and uh, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So, in his lack of maturity, those boys were, uh, you know, um, acting up, and uh, he became the snitch of the family. Uh, which, of course, doesn't go over real well when you're, we're already, when you're already despised for your, by your brothers. But that was just a, a level of immaturity in Joseph's life. Remember, he's only 17 years old. And I wanted to bring him up uh, today because of the fact that he was just a young lad who had aspirations like anybody else, who wanted to you know, find out what does God have for him in my future. You know, I'm expecting good things for my future. And so he, would, you know, he, he anticipated it, it would be a, a good life, not realizing what was ahead for him. And the Bible says that when his brethren saw that their father loved him more, uh, oh, excuse me, forgive me, verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And, and I, I just put in my Bible ethnicities, ethnicities, many colors, that he would literally have an impact on the world so that all and every nation, every, every colored skin person in the world would um, come to know Christ as their Savior. Is that cool or what? Anyway, moving on. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. They hated him. And the Bible says, um, could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him yet even more. And uh, yet the more. And he said unto them, here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, now listen, I, I wrote this down in my Bible, Isaiah 55, verse 10, why, and 11. Why is that important? Because every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall not return to him void, but shall accomplish that which pleases him and prosper in the thing whereto it is sent. So for God's will to be fulfilled, it has to be declared. Yes. How many want God's will in your life? Raise your hand. Well, for that to happen, it has to be declared. You have to say something. You can't just hope and wish and knock on wood. You have to declare what God has said in his word. A promise he has made to you. You declare it out of your mouth. Praise God. It goes into your future and brings it to pass. Come on. Give God a good shout. Hallelujah. Amen. It really is true. So the Bible says, he says, for behold, we were binding. Uh, verse 7. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made ob obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. I mean, it just keeps intensifying and intensifying uh, the hatred they had for their brother. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to us. You think he'd have wised up by now. <laughs> but again, it had to be spoken. And he dreamed another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. Now, um, uh, there were, and I don't, I tried to go back and really, okay, what is that figure? And some people say, well, it was mom and dad and the 11 boys. Because at this time, there were 11 ki uh, kids, not 12, which, of course, like Benjamin would come around later, okay? So the Bible says, uh, and behold, uh, uh, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father, to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I uh, and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, uh, but his father observed the words. There was something that he said that brought us a conviction to his father that something prophetic or something supernatural was happening at this time, though he couldn't interpret it or understand it. So here you got God's plan, and here you have great persecution and great hatred for this young man, and yet it, none of it thwarted the will of God for Joseph's life. And you'll see why uh, that happened in a moment. Amen. And so the Bible says, um, verse um, 
uh, the Bible says, I won't read, I gotta keep uh, skipping some things, but the Bible says that um, one day his father sent Joseph on a, just a simple mission, and that was to go check out his brothers and see what they were doing. And so he went, found them, the Bible says, in a place called Dothan. And, and once he found them, the Bible says that his brothers saw him coming from a distance, and they, abs- they hated him so bad that they planned a strategy, listen, to kill him. But one, uh, it, it was Reuben and it was one other, or Judah, uh, they stepped in, you know, and said, oh, let's not do that. Let's not get, get you know, it, that crazy. Let's just throw him in a pit. And while, then they threw him in a pit and ultimately they sold him to a caravan of Ishmaelites who were coming through that way. And, and of course, they bought Joseph and they um, brought him to, down to Egypt. It so reminded me of Jesus. How that, remember when Herod said uh, he, put out a, uh, he put out a command that all the children from two years old be killed? And so the angel of the Lord woke up Joseph, uh, Mary's husband, and said, take the child and go down to Egypt. Yeah. Isn't that cool? <laughs> See, Jesus went down to Egypt spiritually so that we could uh, come and be joined to him spiritually. Hallelujah. Yeah. Egypt was always a type of the world. Uh, And uh, Jesus brought you out of the world so that you could serve the Lord at a higher level in this world. If you agree, say amen to that. So the Bible says that um, his brothers then at that point, they they killed a goat and they took the blood of that goat and dipped uh, that coat of many colors in blood and took it back to their father and gave him the report that his, the son, the one he loved so dearly was killed by an evil beast. As you'll read on, you'll witness the devastating heartbreak of their father, who, listen, for the next 13 years carried the guilt and emotional pain of making the mistake of sending his son out there that day. He carried that. And then you have the callousness and the cruelty displayed by his brothers. But it, again, did not disrupt the plan of God for Joseph's life. As you journey through this life, even as the graduates that are present today, as you journey through this life, every relational, uh, every relationship uh, of your life will be tested because that's what life's about. It's about relationships. Amen. Amen. I mean, I have a Harley and I enjoy riding it and I can kick that thing and it never responds with offense (laughs) and unforgiveness. But that is the part of the reality of this journey through life. You'll have opportunities, this is so good, to feel the pain from the misdeeds of others. And and just like Joseph, your response will determine how far you get regarding your destiny. I've watched, now we're old enough to have observed people's lives um, uh, that they held on to hurt, they held on to offense, and the very thing that hurt and offended them comes back towards them in a negative way. God wants us to be free, praise God, to, to, to love people and be a light to them no matter what happens in, on the relational side of life. If you agree, say amen. amen. Chapter 39, let's read a little more. Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought or purchased Um, Joseph of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with, and the Lord was with Joseph. Say that. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his son. Imagine this. He would have never gotten to this place if he would have took a hold of offense and unforgiveness and bitterness. He would have never reached this place of favor with God. Amen. Praise God. He stayed in love and he stayed in faith and he stayed devoted to God. He didn't stop and question what he was going through. He didn't stop and say, God, why did you allow this to happen? Amen. He stayed faithful to God. Amen. So beautiful. That's a beautiful story. The Bible says, his master saw the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper and understand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him oversee over his house, and all that he had put, uh, uh, put into his hands. Verse 5, and it came to pass. Say those words. Yeah, it didn't come to stay. 
It came to pass from the time that he made him overseer in his house over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord is upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And uh, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. I mean, every, I mean the, uh, this mighty Potiphar didn't even know what he had but was, wasn't concerned about it because he knew that Joseph would never take advantage of him. Amen. He never did. He never did. But let's go on, verse 7. And it came to pass, after these things, it's amazing how God will answer a prayer and you get a breakthrough and then you get stupid. The Bible says, after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me. I mean, today, you know, I, mean, I don't want to get into this, but today it's unbelievable, you know, the, the, the sexuality of our young people. And uh, people say, you know, well, uh, you know, I, I, my child is sexually active. And I always say, well, then somebody activated her. Somebody activated him. Because I'm telling you right now, uh, if God wants you, if God's will is that you live a separated life unto him uh, until that day that you do take a mate and you join themselves uh, to them, you know, and until that time, uh, God will grace you for that journey if you allow him to. Can I have an amen? Amen. I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm just simply saying God has the best for us, but we make sure we, we want uh, his best interests at heart. Uh, uh, for that uh, purpose. Amen. So the Bible says she cast her eyes on Joseph and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master uh, wadeth not or doesn't even realize what is with me in the house. And he hath committed all that he has to my hand. There's none greater in this house than I. He wouldn't say that. Out of, he was just saying, I have the power. I have the power to get anything that I ever want, except the Bible says, Everything has been put in my hands but thee, because thou art his wife. And how then can I do this uh, evil wickedness, this great wickedness, and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And again, the Holy Spirit said to me years ago, the conviction to do right must become stronger than the temptation to do wrong. And the conviction to do right doesn't come from any other place and source but God himself, the word of God, and the Holy Spirit. Can I have an amen? amen. Otherwise, you will succumb to the carnal nature that you possess. I've always said, my goodness, why, God, why couldn't the sexual side of man and woman just be awakened for uh, babies? Amen. That's good. But that's not the case. God made something so holy, and of course, the devil had to pervert it and twist it. And or we have, and it saddens my heart when you have, you know, you have situations in your life where you've got young kids getting pregnant or wedlock, and then all of a sudden nobody wants them because they have a child. That's really sad. So sad, it breaks my heart. So these mistakes can impact us the rest of our lives, the choices we make. So the Bible goes on to say, and I won't read it, but the, oh, let me read this last part of it here. He said, it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into this house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. I'm first, well, number one, I, I guarantee you Potiphar's wife was a holla holla. She was a knockout. She had to been gorgeous. I'm, I'm serious about that because they had access to anybody they wanted. And so here she is. She is trying to seduce this young man. And of course, being a 17 or 18-year-old young man, you know, that would be pretty easy to succumb to. And so, but the Bible says that, uh, he, oh, let me finish reading this and we'll, we'll be done with this part. She caught him by his garment. He's all by himself. She's all by herself. It's the perfect setting for compromise. But the Bible says, lie with me. Uh, she said, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out. And it came fast when she saw that he left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called the men of the house and spoke unto them saying, see, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came unto me to lie with me and I cried with a loud voice, liar. Amen. 
But what's so beautiful about this story is that he fled the situation, uh, you know, number one. But the sad part about the story momentarily is that he was sentenced to prison. Now listen, he was sent to prison. We don't even know how long. All we know is that he served two years in prison for a crime he never committed. All because he wanted to please the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And yet in all of this, again, it's so beautiful to see the heart of Joseph because in all this, he never grabbed on to to embitterment and offense. He he never uh, played the blame game. He just stayed committed to God. Such an awesome story. So chapter, and I'll run through these chapters because I don't have time to read them all. In chapter 40, uh, there were, uh, as he's in prison, there's two uh, men that got in trouble with the Pharaoh. It was the baker and the butler. A- amen. And so, they had two ha- and so Joseph had two dreams. Now here comes two more dreams. As he's in prison and they're in prison with him, they each have a dream. And they wake up in the morning and they don't understand the dream. And Joseph said, well, I'll interpret it for you. And so he does. And, uh, and uh, for, for the baker, it was bad news. <laughs> but for the butler, it was good news. The baker lost his life, uh, and, but the butler was restored back into his position under the Pharaoh. And what's so beautiful about this story is that, um, was that when, once that interpretation came forth and once the, bake, the butler was about to be released, he said to the, uh, Joseph said to the butler in verse, uh, uh, chapter 40, verse 14, please remember me and do me a favor when things go well with you. Mention me to Pharaoh. Now watch this. So he might let me out of this place for I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. So he said, would you please remember, I did this for you. So you're going to go through life where you do things for people, and they simply forget. Not, they don't do it for any other reason. They simply forget. They get distracted. But listen, God never forgets. Amen. He never forgets your good deeds. He never forgets the kindness you show towards people. Never. He always records it. And the verse 23 says, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. (laughs) Never thought. Uh, And again, Joseph could could have gotten so angry and embittered, but he stayed devoted to God. I'm telling you, what? This guy wasn't even saved. He wasn't born again. And yet, what? a disposition that he had inwardly. He stayed humble and subservient to the Most High God. Hallelujah. All right, chapter 41. So here comes dream number five and six. Pharaoh has a dream. And the dream had everything to do with the survival of Israel. It had everything to do with the survival of the nations. He had a dream, and uh, no one, he called for his um, all his psychics and all, you know, his witches and, and uh, to, to interpret the dream and nobody could interpret it. So he said this. He threatened that everybody, all the prophets, everybody in a that would be killed if somebody couldn't interpret the dream. And so, of course, um, here's Joseph. He prayed and God gave him the interpretation. Amen. There would be seven years of prosperity. I always think about this for our future. Seven years of prosperity followed by seven years of drought. Such severe drought that it impacted every nation of the world at that known time. And it was that severe. And so uh, that was the prophecy. There would be seven years of prosperity. So what happened? The Pharaoh, because of the prophetic interpretation, he promotes Joseph to become the second, command, second man, the second most powerful man in all of Egypt. And he was a Hebrew. Is that awesome or what? Or let's say it this way. He was a man of God. He was a man of God. You know, I think about that, kids. I think about this. Here's, here, here, is, uh, here, here is this young man. He's, he's just a kid. He's young, and yet he's got this passion to please God, and he is surrounded by adultery. And I know we talk about it all the time. We always say, oh, it's so dark today. Hey, it ain't near as dark as it was back then. It's not even near as dark as it was back then. So we have no excuse not to walk with God today. Can I have an Amen. Don't get your focus on the darkness. Get your focus on the light. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because we have a future and we have a hope and a future because of our walk with God. Can I have an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
So they avoided a major crisis. And all of Egypt prospered, including, including the man of God, Joseph, all because he remained devoted to Almighty God. So after 13 years of passing every test, God promoted Joseph, hallelujah, and blessed him because of his faith in God. After 13 years of trusting God, never wavering in the faith of God, he reached, Joseph reached his divine destiny. After 13 years, as Joseph's brother stood before their own brother, listen, they were unable to recognize the one they'd sold into slavery. They were staring into the eyes of one who was 100% Egyptian on the outside, but he was, more importantly, he was 100% God on the inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you hear me? 100% God on the inside. Why was that important? Because if you wouldn't have been, those boys would have lost their lives. Every one of them would have died. The future seed of Abraham would have not been able to make it without them because they were the descendants of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. So, I love this. This is final, right? This is it for this story. Genesis 45. Now, I, oh, please, kid, everybody read the story. It starts in Genesis 37 and goes through Genesis 45. It is, I've, I've shed tears over it, tears of pain, but tears of joy reading this story. Why? Because now, finally, the day has come when he's going to reveal himself to his brothers. So here's the story, chapter 45. Joseph could stand it no longer. There were many people in the room, he's, um, and he said to his attendants, attendants, out, all of you. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Watch this. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians heard him. These weren't weepings of, embitter, of, an, of an embittered soul, but they were tears of love for a family that he still loved. In spite of what they did to him. What a heart of God. Amen. What a heart of God. He wept with tears of joy for finally standing before the ones that he thought about those entire 13 years. Not with embitterment, not with offense, not with I hope they get what's coming to them, but with the depths of the love of his creator God. And, and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? Stop and think about that. His father was old when he was sent into captivity. And the first thing he says to his brothers is, Daddy's still living. I miss my father. Is he still alive? And the Bible says his brothers were speechless. I bet they were. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Now watch this. And then Joseph says to them, please come closer. Amen. I want to embrace you. I want you to know that the mistakes you made, I have never held on to them. I forgot them a long time ago. Amen. Can you imagine how we would be as families can you imagine how we would be as a church if everybody had that kind of spirit? Amen. That we love one another in spite of the chinks in our armor. Yes. Yes. I just think it's such a beautiful story. He said to them, so they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, man. Hallelujah. See, they would have died. There was, listen, you may not know this, but there was only 80 Jews left during this time. There's only 80 Jews left. 80. So, I mean, that's not a lot. But again, God sent me ahead of you to preserve your lives. I'm closing. In 1998, I, um, excuse me, 1968, whew, a long time ago, I graduated from high school. And in those days, I don't know if they still do it, they always chose a theme song for the graduates. Did they do that today? And, um, and so 
Our theme song that year, remember, my life was so messed up, you know, really raised in a broken family situation, and um, uh, I didn't know the Lord. My life was messed up, but the theme song for my graduation was to dream the impossible dream. Amen. Amen. And it wasn't until years later after my salvation that I read the, the, the lyrics to this song and realized that that song was for my life, even though I didn't know it. It was for every, everybody's life that I graduated with. Amen. And it really talks about Christ's journey to the cross. It's, that's what the song's about. Amen. So I'm going to read you the lyrics. It says, to dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure chaste from afar, to try when your arms are too heavy to reach the unreachable star. Again, so beautifully fits Joseph's life. This is my quest, to follow the star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to fight for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. That's exactly what Joseph did. And I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest, that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. And the world will be better for this. That one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable stars. If I'd only known, had any insight of that in those days. But it wasn't that many years later that God get, did get me at my attention to reach the unreachable stars. Jeremiah 29, this is the last scripture for you kids and for everyone here today. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. Kids, don't let the world drag you. Don't let the world drag you into their mess. Stay completely committed to God. Pray to me and I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God decrees. Hallelujah. So please, dream the impossible dreams. Nothing's impossible for God. Whatever you believe that you should be doing in life, well, believe God that he'll get you there. Hallelujah. No matter how big the obstacles are, how big the mountains are, hallelujah, God will get you there. Can I have an amen? Amen. And that's for everybody here today. Bow your heads. I want to pray for you this morning. Thank you for watching the message. I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart, and Jesus, I make you Lord of my life, and I thank you for saving me. If you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. Make sure you get into a Bible-based church like Faith Family. Open your Bible and read it daily, starting with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Surround yourself with godly friends that will help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. We trust that you are encouraged, strengthened, and are ready to fight the good fight of faith. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this message so we can reach more people to fulfill our mission of strengthening families through God's word. Let us know in the comments below if you gave your life to Jesus or how this message touched your life. We would love to hear from you. God wants you to know that he is for you, not against you. We love you, we are praying for you, and your family. We'll see you next time.